Hello friends, welcome to Abhi Tutorials. Today we are going to cover two different topics. The spread operator and the destructuring of arrays and objects in JavaScript. First let's look into the spread operator. The spread operator is denoted by three dots as in the screen. The spread operator is similar to the rest operator we have seen in our previous video for which I have given the video link in the description. The spread operator is also introduced in ES6 version of JavaScript. The purpose of the spread operator is to place or unpack or copy the content of array or object into another array or object respectively. Let's see an example. Consider that we have a simple array named colors with four values as given here. Let's create a new array named rainbow which is initially empty. Let's now add the colors array into the rainbow array which is well a valid syntax in JavaScript. In addition to it, we will add some additional color values to it as comma separated values which is also a valid syntax. Let's now try to console lock the rainbow array. Run the program. After the program is run, what we get is a two dimensional array as highlighted here. That is a child array colors is enclosed as itself within its own set of square brackets within the enclosing parent array rainbow. If we try to access any element of the array using its index number, say first element of the array by using the index number 0, we will get the full child array as the first element as highlighted here. If we need to access the color violet of the rainbow array, then we have to access it like how we access an two-dimensional array as highlighted in the screen. This method will get us the required value as here. But what if we need to access the elements as if we access regular array elements that is without using the notation to access a two-dimensional array. This is when the spread operator comes into play. So to use the spread operator we just need to add three dots in front of the colors as given here. This will ensure that the child array elements will be treated as part of the parent array and will not be treated as a separate array. So now we no more required to use the two dimensional array access notation to access a specific element in the rainbow array. We can just comment out the line, run the program again. Instead of a two dimensional array as before, we will just get a single dimensional array as output. And just by using a single index number itself, we can access the array element. Similar to its use in array, we can also use the spread object within an object. Let's create a new file example2.js to see the usage. Here we have created a new object full name with the two attributes first and last name. Let's create one more object named address and let it have two attributes door number and street. Let's now create a new variable identified as person and let's add the previously created objects into the person object. Let's now console log the person object Run the program now. You will be able to see object's full name and address within the person object as displayed here. But in place of the inner variables, if we add the spread operator as a prefix as given here and then run the program once again, we will get the output as given here with the properties of the child objects copied to the enclosing object rather than the individual objects being placed within the main object. Using the spread operator, the attributes will be added as direct children instead of being added as properties of subobjects. Let's now look into destructuring. Destructuring is nothing but extracting values or properties from arrays and objects and assigning them to variables. Destructuring is a process which you can perform on arrays and objects. And as already said, using destructuring, you can unpack values from arrays and objects, assign them to regular variables. First, we will see how to destructure arrays and then we will proceed with how to destructure objects. Let's see an example. Here we have an users array containing three values. To destructure all three variables in array, we have to create three variables. The variables can be of any name when you destructure an array. We will then enclose the regular variables a, b and c within the array syntax as given here. And we will assign the users array to it. What happens here is, the first value will be assigned to variable a the second value to variable b and third value will be assigned to variable c. Let's now try to console log a, b and c and run the program. We will get the respective result for the individual variables a, b and c. Destructuring works fine if there are more number of array values than the values you try to destructure. For example, let's add an additional value to the user's array and run the program again. 
it still works as before and existing functionality will not be hampered. If you want to use the last item from the user's array, you can create another variable d as given here and add it to the destructuring array as given here and now you will be able to access it through the variable d as highlighted and when the program is run, you will be able to see the value of d as well in the output. So far, we have seen how to destructure arrays. Now we will see how to destructure objects. Here we have a new object called full name which has two properties, the first name and the last name. To destructure object property, we have now create variables first name and last name. Unlike array destructuring, where we had any name to identify the variables. In case of object destructuring, the variable name should be same as the property name of the object to be destructured. Otherwise, the object destructuring doesn't work. Now, similar to array destructuring, we can assign the full name object to the individual variables as displayed here. But instead of square brackets, we will use the curly brackets as this is object destructuring. Another important thing is that if you are using the object destructuring syntax, you have to enclose it within additional round brackets as displayed here. Otherwise, you may encounter error while performing object destructuring. Now the object full name is destructured into the variables first and last names. If you do not like the start and end rounded brackets enclosing the object destructuring, there is one more syntax you can use for object destructuring. Let's comment out the current syntax. Let's declare the variables first name and last name as given here enclosed in curly braces and in the declaration step itself, let's assign the full name object to it. This is an alternate one-liner syntax for performing object destructuring. Let's test it by adding a console log to the corresponding variables as given. Run the program again. You will be able to see the destructured variable values in the result. Let's also test the previously commented code by commenting the latest syntax in line 9 and uncommenting line 6 and 7. Let's run the program again. On execution, we get the same result as the other syntax. That ends our topic today. Thanks for watching our video and stay tuned. Thank you.